So hopefully the ball will be rolling on getting it rebuilt so that we can continue to use it for ministry. We can see already that it's been a great tool. Um, and we do have plans in October for our community fall event. So we're hoping that everything will continue to roll along. But if you can please keep uh, the whole process in your prayers so that we can continue to use that as a tool for ministry. I invite you to stand as you're able as we begin our worship with confession and forgiveness as printed in your bulletin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin. Receive your forgiveness and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our gathering song this morning is broken, number 556. Thank 
God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us together pray. Ever loving God, your Son gives himself as living bread for the life of the world. Fill us with such a knowledge of his presence that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life to serve you continually. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we hear scripture. <laughs> the first reading is from Proverbs 9, verses 1 through 6. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in the town. You that are simple, to turn in here. To those without sense, she says, come eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We will now read the psalm responsibly by verse, beginning with the refrain and repeating it where indicated with the capital letter R. Psalm 34, 9 through 14. Those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Fear the Lord, you saints of the Lord, for those who fear the Lord lack nothing. The lions die for and suffer hunger, for those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Come, children, and listen to me. I will teach you reverence for the Lord. Who among you takes pleasure in life and desires long life? Enjoy Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from lying words. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. The second reading is from Ephesians 5, verses 15 through 20. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise making the most of the time, because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, 
but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. With the recent grocery store remodels, I don't know about you, but I've been a little frustrated trying to find the few items that I need. I'm one of those people when I grocery shop, I just want to get in, get what I need, and get out. Have you noticed, though, how the food stores have grown over the years? They just seem to get larger and more full of all kinds of items. For instance, when you walk down the aisle of cereals, there used to just be a handful, maybe a dozen of cereals that you would pick from, and now you have a whole long aisle. Too many choices to pick from. I know I'm dating myself, but one of those cereal commercials, the longest one that ran from 1972 1986, featured three brothers that were sitting at the breakfast table with a bowl of cereal. One brother said to the other, what's that stuff? Some cereal, it's supposed to be good for you. I'm not going to try it, you try it. And they would push it away. The two brothers decided, let's get Mikey. He won't like it, he hates everything. <laughs> and of course, Mikey was eating it up. Hey, he likes it. Hey, Mikey. That line is pretty famous. He likes it. Hey, Mikey. But we remember the ad, and the ad is for life. Life cereal, though, that is both nutritious and delicious. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus talked a lot about eating and about life. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. <clears throat> the bread that I will give to the life of the world is my flesh. As we hear these words, we need to remember that Jesus is still talking to the crowds and the disciples after he had just fed 5,000 from five barley loaves and two fish. And in that story, all ate until they were full, and there were 12 baskets of leftovers. There was an abundance in these few short verses of scripture. Jesus used the word flesh six times. It can be a little uncomfortable, just like the Jews. We might ask, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? 
I also noticed, though, not just how many times that Jesus used flesh, but how many times Jesus connected the eating of this flesh to life and to living. The two must be connected. So I was wondering, what gives you life? We've used that term before. I admit I'm more likely to use it in a negative way. In challenging situations, I said, well, that just sucked the life right out of me. Or maybe some of you have also said, well, there's 30 minutes of my life I'm never going to get back. <laughs> it's kind of easy to recognize and acknowledge when something is draining and taking life away from us. And sometimes when we notice we're being drained, it might help us to just take a minute and realize what's going on in our life. Stress, anxiety, those are things that can suck the life right out of us. Negative people are ones that seem to challenge everything you say or do. Your job, in particular for many as changes were made for remote working or for not finding workers qualified to do the job that you need. Then there's also financial hardships, health concerns of your own or a loved one. We feel like life is definitely being drained in our political divisions. And also in trying to determine what's true. What information are we getting that is the truth? especially around politics and the coronavirus? And how is the best way to live with this virus in our midst? So, putting aside that which sucks the life out of us, on the other hand, when have you felt full of life? Can you recognize those moments that are full, that are life-giving? Jesus spoke of eating. He spoke of life and of the living Father. We can see from Jesus' words that life is both physical and it's spiritual. And the life is always God-given. It's also helpful for us when we hear the sixth chapter of John to remember how John begins his gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. What has become into being in him was life. And the life was the light to all people. And the word became <coughs> flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. In that life commercial, when the boys were asked, what's that stuff? He said, some cereal that's supposed to be good for you. I was wondering about how much of my life I spent trying to do the right things because it's supposed to be good for me. Or also about the guilt and the shame that I've carried because I know my actions are not good for me or for others. Jesus, the bread of life that came down from heaven, is God's Son and the life and the flesh are connected. Through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, we know and we live in the abundant life that Jesus offers as the true bread from heaven. This abundant life is given now, and it's ours in eternity too. So I was also wondering, how would my daily life be different if I focused and abided in the living bread from heaven. And I ignored all those things that sucked the life out of me. Jesus offers us a mutual relationship, a relationship of abiding in the love of God where we can know the creator, redeemer, and sustainer. I just wondered, if I lived focused on the living bread, how would that affect my own well-being? 
How would it affect the relationships with others? My neighborhood, my community, how would it affect our world if we all focused on living Jesus Christ, the living bread that came down from heaven? I also wonder how we, as a community, Zion Lutheran Church, how can we center ourselves and focus on Jesus, the living bread, so that we can be guided in our ministry, so that we can do the things that God is calling us to do, so others can come into this loving relationship with Jesus. What ministries would we do? How would we grow ourselves in fullness as disciples of Jesus? The life cereal commercial claims that it's both nutritious and delicious. I think it's Jesus, the bread of life, that gives us the nutrition to live an abundant life.
God of compassion, tend to the wounded. Rescue those tormented by mental illness or mirrored in addiction. Ease the anxiety of those struggling with dementia. Come quickly to help to all who are grieving and all in need of your healing, especially Penny, Dave, Lynn Singson, Kathy Iron, Debbie, Pastor Dell, Deb, Sharon, Claudia, Marvin and Rita, Linda Holtz, and those we name now out loud or in the silence of our hearts. God in your mercy, you hear our prayer. God of community, we are disheartened that the winds destroyed the picnic pavilion. We give you thanks that no one was harmed. Guide the rebuilding process so that the pavilion may continue to be a tool for sharing the gospel in this community. We lift to you and joy those celebrating birthdays this week, Eli Burton, Grace Study, Larry Ion, Emily Study, Lily Weisbeck, and Joyce Lentmeyers. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of resurrection, bring us to new life. Give us the living bread from heaven through which we abide in your love. And on the last day, raise us up with Mary, mother of Jesus, and all the saints to eternal life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift these prayers and all our prayers to you. O oh God, confident in the promise of your saving love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I think this is a good time to remind that this is the time in service where we would normally share the peace with one another. And we've been postponing that. But what we often forget, sometimes we think that sharing the peace is all about being friendly and visiting with one another. But that part in worship is all about coming together as a community. Remember the scripture that says if you have a grudge against your brother to go and lay it at the altar or go and settle it before you come to the altar to give your gift. And so that time of service is where we can remember one another and unite together in peace before we come to be united here at the communion table in Jesus' bread and body. Thank you all for your offering gifts. There's an offering plate in the back, and many of you give electronically, and we thank you for that gift, or mail it into the church as well. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts towards those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care, and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able as we prepare for the Lord's meal. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you. Open his arms to all. 
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus invites you to this table. Come and feast on the bread of life. You may be seated. Thank you. 
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we go from this place, our blessing comes from our Taking Faith Home insert sheet, so be, be sure to take that home with you and use it this week. May Jesus, the bread of heaven, bless you with life and faith, now and always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending song is number 881.